What would change in the world if you, me, and everyone choose to feed the wolf of possibilities instead of the one of doubt, distrust, and despair? The way I see it, our point of view creates reality, not the other way around. Somewhere deep within, I think we know that. In this podcast, I am daring you to claim this remarkable superpower. Join us and be inspired by trackers, explorers, and finders of possibilities from the multiverse of hope. Welcome to the podcast, Feeding the Wolf of Possibilities, with your host, Katrina Valentin. Welcome to this episode of Feeding the Wolf of Possibilities. And my guest today is Sara Grandinetti. She is a former owner of a celebrity hair salon in Los Angeles. And she changed her path and became an access consciousness facilitator, specializing in what it takes for people to be them and actualize their dreams. Sarah is also a mother of four, and one of her key programs is called Being You, Being With Them, which is a parenting conversation that aims to inspire parenting from possibility instead of problem to be solved. So today we're going to talk about parenting, and we're going to talk about a parenting nightmare, finding out that your child is being bullied, and what possibilities that can open up. Yep. I did say possibilities. Weird, huh? So welcome, Sarah. So happy to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited to have more of these conversations out in the world. So grateful. Well, talking about conversations. So could you begin by telling us a bit about the Being You, Being With Them program? What is it? And why did you start it? Well, I have the been gifted uh, the possibility of parenting with Dr. Dane here and Gary Douglas um, in my corner since day one. So they're the founders of Access Consciousness, and um, they have just been such a space of possibility when anything would come up, I would be able to call them and they would contribute to me having ease um, with the things that come up with parenting. And so once I became a Being You Certified Facilitator, I started to look at the fact that the reason I have so much ease with my kids and the reason people really love being around my children is because I parent them from a space of being me, not being what my parents weren't or not being exactly as my parents were, which is where a lot of us, I call it DNA parenting, where a lot of us get (laughs) what we're supposed to be as a parent from our parents, whether it's against it or for it. And so I started a program and uh, we went for a year and a half and now we're like a monthly uh, Zoom call where we get on and we just explore what's up. And we have a lot of people on there that actually don't even have kids. So they unparent in those conversations themselves from whatever showed up from them as a child. Yeah. Well, they had parents. They may not have kids, but they obviously had parents. Exactly. So since you've been having people on for a while, what has changed for them when they start being themselves or start being them with their kids? Well, the number one thing I would say is the ease starts to show up. Um, Not everything has to be so traumatic and dramatic. What your kids choose is not a reflection of you and your parenting. It's a reflection of who they be and how do you support that more. And when you're supporting anybody and being them, um, it doesn't mean the road smooths out. It just means you can have more ease with the bumps. And so what I've seen people walk through is tremendous. I mean, everything from acknowledging your child, you know, actually desires um, to not be here anymore and how to handle that. Or, um, you know, the daily in and out of uh, what you think you have to be as a parent and, you know, how you give yourself up so much as a parent, adding you back into the equation, how that actually creates more ease and not what we think is like, you know, takes away time from your kids that actually contributes to them. So there's been a, a whole spectrum of things that have um, opened up. And for me too, just to facilitate it has been such a gift. Wow. Thank you so much. There were so many directions we could take this conversation based on that. And I really wanted to dive in to bullying, at least as a start. So bullying really gets to me. I was bullied as a kid. And ever since that, anything that has even a semblance to that energy makes all my inner alarm clocks go off. And I, I go into resistance and reactions and fight. And over the years, I've learned that it's not really my greatest choice, that there are other very different ways to handle those kind of situations. And I know that you recently had your youngest daughter being bullied in school and that together you two choose a completely different way 
to go about changing that. And I was wondering if you were willing to tell that story. So my daughter at the time, her name is Shyla. She was around eight years old. So it was a couple of years ago. And she was coming home with her shoulder slumped. Um, her natural state of joy just wasn't there. And, you know, as a parent, you pick up on those things and you start, you know, wondering, poking holes, asking whatever questions you can. And a lot of times, which um, we talk about in the program too, is uh, you have to learn to give them space when they don't actually want to answer your questions because more poking doesn't actually get you where you think you want to go. So I just started to uh, be more space around her um, because she wasn't telling me what was going on. And eventually there was an evening where uh, I found her crying in her bedroom and I went in and I was like, okay, what, what's up, babe? And she's like, you know, the kids are being really mean to me, to me at school. And she gave me a list of all the unkindnesses. She, she actually called it unkindness. She never called it bullying. She said, I'm, I'm experiencing unkindness. So there's a lot of unkindness and they're saying these things and they're teasing me about this and that. And um, she was a slow uh, reader. So she was having trouble with reading and actually math. And, and she was in some special education classes. So she was being teased about that. And exactly as you described, Kat, because I experienced bullying too. I went into all the defense and the reactionary reality and the um, I'm going to find that little bully and I'm going to talk to him or her and, you know, tell, set them straight, or I'm going to call the school and we're going to have a meeting and we're going to take this to the top for whatever, because that's what we're taught to do um, in the face of these kind of situations in life period, whether it's about your kid or otherwise, right. Is to go to the fight. And so I went through all that. I, I didn't actually contact anybody, but I went to that mindset of the fight. And around that time, there was a conversation in access consciousness about giving up the fight. And I was like, wow, what would be possible if I looked at that, this situation from that place, if I didn't have to fight anybody to change this, if I didn't have to make anybody wrong to change this, what could I be for Shyla? And around that time, um, I actually had a friend who sent me a video um, knowing he knew Shyla and uh, he wanted to contribute to her. And so he sent a video that had nothing to do with bullying. It was just about her acknowledging her greatness and kind of pumping her up. And I said, Oh, thank you for that. I said, I'll use that when, when the time is right. Like I just kind of held on to it. And one morning um, I was dropping her off at school and um, I have always been of the mindset. Um, I think this is part of the permission Gary and Dane gave me to have my kids backs in a way that is not common is that if they don't want to do something, if they're truly fighting something, to actually allow them the space to choose. So we were getting out of school, out of the car one day for school. And she was like, I'm not going, I'm not going to school. I can't take this anymore. I'm not going. I was like, all right, you don't have to go stay in here in the car as long as you want, you know, what would you like to choose? And um, so she, she had kind of teared up and she was, her body was um, definitely shaking and responding to whatever stressors were there. All of a sudden the idea of that video popped. I said, Hey, shy, do you want to watch this thing? You know, our friend sent us. So I sent, I put her hand on my phone. She watched that and I watched her whole body language change and I watched her sit up straighter. She wiped her tears. She took a deep breath and she's like, okay, mommy, I'm ready to go to school. And I was like, whoa, like that, it was that easy. Like I've been telling her as her parent for a really long time, how wonderful and amazing she is. But there was something about hearing it from someone else, because I think we're really good at dismissing those that are supposed to have our back or supposed to love us. So she got out of the car, skipped literally across the crosswalk with the, the person who runs the crosswalk, gave that guy a high five. I, as I watched her going to school, I was like, wow, that is so different. So I drove to work that day and I had a few uh, minutes before my client, my first client was there. So I did a Facebook live. I just popped to ask, I said, Hey, anybody out there who's willing, would you send me a video encouraging my daughter? You don't have to know her. You don't have to um, have any experience with you know, parenting, you know, one-on-one, you don't have to be a life coach. If you could just send a video inspiring a young nine-year-old girl or eight-year-old girl to be her, I would be grateful. And I got videos from around the world. And I said, okay, what, and, and that's the beauty of being a part of access consciousness is there are just people around the world that have your back that you may have never met in person, but just are so willing to contribute. And so I got flooded with videos over the next few days. I mean, people's kids were shooting little videos. They were doing dances for her. And so what I started to do is show her one of those videos every morning before school. And without any fight, it changed. She started going to school and being herself, being 
in the joy of who she bees, being in the gift of who she bees, and the bullying just stopped. And what I know about like the, the judgments and where bullying comes from, if you don't have the judgment of you, the judgment that gets cast at you or thrown at you, projected at you, doesn't stick. I, I've learned this from you know, the beauty classes I do, I've learned this from my other daughter and her story. I've learned this in so many different places where like, if it's not in your world, it can't find you. And so when Shiloh was walking in, being all of her, being in a space that um, doesn't match somebody who would be bullied, the bullying didn't have a place to go. That taught me so much, even just about myself, right? Like if I'm not judging me, then the judgments of me don't even get into my world. But we never had to have a conversation with the bully or the school or the teacher or anything. It just changed um, by changing Shyla's point of view about her. So beautiful. And it's so true. And bullying is any age anyway. People can be bullied as adults as well. And that would work for them too. The, the fact that the judgments don't stick if you don't have them. There's nowhere to them to kind of tag on. And I, when I was a kid and was bullied, my parents made a choice to move. I never really had a chance to deal with it, actually. We just moved somewhere else. And when my daughter was bullied, she was around the same age, which is always interesting. I did what you did first. I wanted to just kill the kids that were bullying. And I, I even like rushed. It, it was an incident and she was really upset and they called from the school and I rushed in like this lion mom. And scared every single kid because I, you know, when you come in and you're like, ah, <laughs> so they all got very, very scared. They wouldn't come to our house for a long time. And afterwards, Millie told me, she said, mom, I am so grateful. You always have my back. And I'm so grateful that you were willing to be there for me. And I think I need to handle this. She was extremely clear. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Then, you know, let me know if I can help in any way. And she chose this such an interesting way to deal with it. She did not talk to the bullies either. She stopped playing with every girl in school and started to play with the guys only for about six months. So what happened to her is that she, the need to be with the other girls disappeared out of her world. And by that need disappearing, suddenly she became a valuable right. item again. Yeah, she became the valuable product because she didn't need them. Therefore, she became interesting. The girls wanted to be with her again. And she was for a long time quite uninterested because, you know, it was easier to be with the guys. And then slowly she started to add them back. And I was so grateful because the way she handled it, it empowered her immensely. And she has used that all through. Like, I mean, this was when she was around 10. Now she's nearly 20. And she has used this, the willingness to say, no, if, if you are unkind, I will not hang with you. Then I'll go and hang with these people. I do not need to be treated unkindly. And I think it will help her her whole life. And I looked at that like it was a possibility for her to learn something that actually will empower her for her whole life. But I went into, oh my God, <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> and it's happening to her too. <laughs> so that, what you were saying with how we want to go to the resistance and reaction and the fight and the lion mom and instead we can look at okay what's actually required here that will change the place the kid is coming from like that's what really changes it not the trying to fight the circumstances around it's to change basically who the kid bees I guess and who, who the kid shows up as so what's happened after that What's really interesting now is that she's actually friends with a lot of the kids that used to bully her. Um, and, you know, I'm, anytime I've been interviewed or been talking on this topic of bullying, it's really to also get out the mindset that like either kid, the bully or the recipient, whether your child or otherwise is wrong. You know, we pick up on the insanities of the world. Kids digest that and, and then create themselves based on however that comes into their world. And so you know, the, the space that Shyla has been post bullying situation has really been um, an invitation for people or kids, I'm sorry, to know that they're not wrong and that they can choose something different as well. And I think, you know, that that's a lesson big time through, like you said, like even as adults, like if we don't have to go to making someone else wrong in order for us to feel better, 
that's a ripple effect that changes the world. I think a lot of us think that if we have to, if we go to fight, it's because someone's wrong and we have to defend how right we are or how we're the victim. And that's the other, that's the other part of the conversation is the more that I've seen parents facilitate their kids into the fight, it actually breeds the victim mentality where they, they were a victim to this thing, which is why they had to go to so much fight. But if they were never a victim and they were empowered from the, from the start, um, you know, Gary Douglas has told us a number of times, you know, it's not personal and that the, the abuse comes from the acknowledgement that you're the most powerful being in the room. So if our kids knew that, where could they actually claim on and acknowledge it more so they could have more ease. And like you said, create something so different when they grow up. And like you said with Millie, that it goes through her adult life. Right. Yeah. Like, so she now knows that she doesn't need to be treated like that um, from having standing stood in that when she was a kid. And it is it's very true with um, not making the bullies wrong or even the bystanders wrong. The people that were just standing around, not saying anything, because as soon as we do that, that creates that polarity where some people are good and some people are bad. And you have to choose which one you are while actually life. We just change the roles continuously and we move between them. So I'm not going to the fight or the, like, we have to change the mean people or kill them yeah. <laughs> as a lion mom. It actually dissolves that whole, the whole situation in a completely different way. And, and that is what changes the world. That part, if we could use that in parenting overall, would change everything. Yeah. And, and just the mere fact that like, if you look at one of the main things with parenting for me is to look at where you learned your most valuable lessons. You know, where did you learn the things that really shaped who you want to be in the world? A lot of the times it's through those uncomfortable situations. They're from choices that didn't go right or the thing, you know, that you really wanted to have happen and, and maybe it didn't, or it didn't show up the way you wanted. And so I always say to parents, like conversations over consequences, if your ch- kids are making choices that are giving them information for who they want to be in the world, then you actually, if something doesn't go right, or they get in trouble for it, or they, you know, whatever it is that's showing up as a consequence, if you sit with them in that moment, that's that, that vulnerable space of when you can actually get in to contribute to them. So if you can have a conversation, instead of creating a consequence for them, you actually get to be the contribution you want to be. And then looking at the choice, asking what they'd like to choose next time, How would you like to show up with this? And so that then, you know, as they grow older, will stick with them more than like whether they, you know, lost their phone for two weeks or had to, you know, my parents always made us write sentences, which I think is so weird. Um, You know, whatever that is like missing out on TV for a month because you did a, you know, A, B or C, sit down with your kids and talk to them, but not from the um, hierarchy of I'm the adult and I have it right. Cause you don't have it right. None of us do and acknowledge where they're at with whatever's going on as far as like their age. Like we can't expect a 10 year old to know how they would respond as a 25 year old, but we often project that into their world. Like they should know better and they don't until you talk to them. It also teaches them that choosing is something they're allowed to do and should do. And then they don't need to do the right choice. They actually just choose. And then what did that create? And then you're having the conversation about what it created instead of, them being so concerned to find that right choice, the perfect choice that they won't choose at all. So hmm, that's brilliant. What did you say? Well, you call it conversations instead of consequences. Conversation over consequences. Over consequences. Ah. Yeah. I, I talked to my husband this week too about because you know when I travel, he's here raising two girls, <laughs> which is very interesting. And um he had a situation come up while I was gone and and he wanted to go to all of his reference points of of growing up, you know, a lot of us are like, Oh, like, even if you've been bullied before and your kid's being bullied, you have a reference point for that. That's all that emotion and all that stuff that comes up. And if, if, so I asked him, I was like, if you didn't have to reference point any of your experiences, cause our kids are growing up in a completely different world. And most people's kids are, um, but the rapid changes of like technology and all, you know, social media and all the things like we didn't have when we were kids, you can't, you, we can't look at what our reference point were, were from that are from those ages and decide that that's how we have to, what we parent from. So I asked him like, and I, and I do this a lot with the parenting group too, is like, Hey, if you didn't have any reference points, what questions would you ask your kid? Because their experience is different. And if you don't have to protect them from anything that happened to you, 
then they actually have that space of choice to look at it, not for through your eyes or what you think is the right good thing or what you had happen, because they are a totally different being in a totally different time. And that will give them more awareness of what's going on for them, not having to filter it through your world. And also they are not us. I think a lot of times, because we use, like you say, the reference points and we somehow think that they are us, just another kind of tilted version of us somehow. <laughs> so just that, like if we, if we weren't, if we were looking at them or receiving them as beings, like as a, as a, as a being that we're getting to know and learning and they are, you know, creating themselves in the world, then what would be possible as a co-creation of whatever relationship that we have with them? Yeah. And you had to be willing to have them know way more about stuff than you do. Yeah. That's the other thing, you know, I've, my kids, you know, being willing to learn from them and receive from them is a huge gift. And a lot of parents don't even get that as a concept. Like I'm supposed to tell them what to do or how to do it. And they receive that and they go have a, a life that, you know, I desire for them, whatever that is. Um, but having your kids share what they know about anything, about people, about relationships, about money, you know, stuff that, that, you know, we've decided they're not supposed to know. They know they're infinite beings. And it's really cool to have them share their awarenesses. And that also co-creates that relationship that has more space for both of you to, you know, be in the gifting and receiving of. Yeah, and that actually brings us back to the bullying again, because one of the things that I've really been so impressed with my daughter as she's been growing up is when things come up with her friends, how she handles it, how she's able to have conversations about it, how like it's not perfect. That's not the point. The point is she actually does handle it. She looks at it from different. She discusses it with her friends and then she makes choices. And then sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't work out. But I learned so much from her. It's like I'm slightly handicapped in that area and I listen to how she looks at things and I learn from her and then yes you're right then she's more willing to listen to me when we have conversations because it's suddenly this gifting and receiving simultaneity that occurs yep and they don't have to be teenagers for that to happen what else is possible beyond like the limitation of size of body age yeah um, I remember my my uh, mother-in-law funny story really quick my mother-in-law sat my son who's now going to be 21 when he was probably about like 13 months old in front of the tv and she said sarah come here sarah come here you gotta see this and i go what and she goes it says she sat him in front of the tv right and she said it's as if he's watching it <laughs> and i was like well, of course he's watching it like you know what i mean like even dogs watch television like what are you talking about but that's so prevalent out there you know, that like, they're not, they're not full beings until their bodies are, you know, and it's just not true. <laughs> so thank you. That is quite amazing. So um, I know that you were working on creating a documentary about Shayla's experience. What was that like when you started to do that? Well, after we got flooded with all those videos, I was like, what is here that, that we could create greater with that the world could hear the story and be inspired and how we could come together. And so, and there were just so many amazing videos that Shyla didn't get to watch all of them because it changed rather quickly. And I had way more videos to get through. And by the time it changed, you know, a kid's attention span, she's like, yeah, yeah, I know I'm amazing. I don't need to watch all these every day anymore. So, um, but I didn't want that to just be like, you know, lost in a digital file somewhere. So, uh, the documentary right now, the working title is the Starfish Documentary. It's uh, telling the story of that I shared with you, Shyla, and her experiences, and how I used those videos to create change for her, highlighting the fact that uh, these people showed up that had never met her, had a lot of them had never even met me in person, and were just so willing to contribute. And that is truly been such a gift in her life. Like when you look at the future that was created by receiving all those videos. Um, I just wanted that word to get out. It's like a global hug. That's so good. <laughs> That's the title. <laughs> and uh, if, if you could give them one tool that they could try with their kids today, what would that be? I would actually say that to start asking, who am I as a parent? Who am I beyond what I've decided, like start asking yourself that question 
because like one of my favorite questions with access is like, who am I today? And what grand and glorious adventures will I have? And as a parent, I think we are so, so quick, like it's nanosecond style to go into being your parents when you're parenting, when you're around your kids that happens so fast that we don't even recognize it. It's that parenting DNA, like I said. And so if you started to ask like, who am I as a parent and what gift am I to my kids through parenting that I've never acknowledged and just start to, to become more aware of those moments when if you were being you, you would be skipping around the house with them, making just as much noise. But because you were always yelled at as a kid to like, quiet down, don't run in the house. That's my life. Um, you know, don't be too loud. Don't, you know, don't have too much fun in the grocery store. Cause this is where we're really serious. Cause the grocery store is really serious. Like how much fun would you have with that grocery cart with your kids using your grocery list as a scavenger hunt and, you know, being way too loud and having way too much fun. That is abrasive to others, you know, who are unwilling to have that much at, start asking those questions. When you go into the crunch, if I were truly being me here, what would I choose? Who would I be? How would I be with my kids? Thank you. And I also wanted to ask, so if somebody has a kid that right now is in a situation where, where the other kids are being unkind, again, what is one question they could start asking? Everybody may not do, you know, for every kid it's different. So it may look different for them than it did for you and Shayla, but, but what would you suggest they start asking? The question that changed all of this that I don't think I mentioned in the story is I asked Shyla, what would you like to create with this? I didn't know why I was asking that question um, other than we ask it, you know, in our family a lot with whatever's going on. Like if, you know, someone's being un- in the siblings here, like being unkind to the other one. I'm like, Hey, what, what did you desire to create with that when you said that to your sister or whatever? So it's kind of the one that fell out. But when I asked that of her, she actually expanded out and she said, I would like to do something for everybody who's being bullied, mommy. I would like to know that, and I, she didn't say bullied. She never said bullied, which is very interesting to me because that's actually a word that's out there that she would know. She called it unkindness the entire time. So she's like, I would like to create something where no one has to feel the unkindness anymore. That, that uh, awareness of hers, I get, is actually what prompted all of the chain of events. She got to look at it from not a problem, but from a possibility and, you know, just put her ask out in the universe. And then here comes the video and then here comes the other videos. And then here, you know, the whole thing kind of um, started moving from that. So let's say take, ask your kid from a space of the possibility and not focusing laser beaming in on it being a problem. And as much as you can get your own reference points of what bullying is out of the way. And also what it also creates is that you're empowering her to know that she knows, and that will then start to shift everything. So that's a a beautiful question. So if someone's listening to this and would like to, you know, hear some more about the way you look at parenting and the tools that you have, and how can they get in touch with you? How can they find you? Uh, They can go to my website, saragrandinetti.com. And on there, um, we have the being you being with them. There's a, there's a Facebook group. And then there's a monthly zoom call that you can now, you don't have to sign up for the whole year. You can just sign up for that once a month. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope to see the documentary someday soon. Me too. (laughs) Bye Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast, Feeding the Wolf of Possibilities. I hope you have more space in your world now. If you would like to listen to earlier episodes, share with other people or subscribe, please go to Spotify, iTunes, or visit katrinavalentin.com slash wolf.